or lives in, uh, in Arkansas, but we've shown his work, I don't know, a couple different, couple different times. So, and you may have seen his work at the Kimber Museum has a fabulous piece from his industrial remnants photographs. And so this is, this is work you've been working on for at least, what, two, three years? 20 years. 20 years. 20 years. Okay. Wow. <laughs> yeah, a lot of it's recent, but it started 20 years ago. It started 20 years ago. So anyway, we, we wanted to put together these two bodies of work of the quarries and the silos um, uh, for your enjoyment and to, to see them yeah. all together. And anyway, yeah. I'll let Mike tell you a little okay. bit about uh, work. So welcome in, even though it's not from Kansas City. Yeah. <laughs> you you got to be from somewhere. So. <laughs> um, I don't have a strong voice, so I'll try to project and I hope I don't lose my voice because that happens quite frequently um, with me. Um, yeah, I like John's introduction uh, very, very much. Uh, Paul, when he wrote to the Church of Colossus, he said, everything that you do, do unto the Lord. And I think John kind of echoed that tonight, that, that's, that's, that passage as well. So, and that has been a philosophy of my work. Uh, everything that I've done has been very much motivated by that. Um, I, I'm not going to talk very long. I, I want to talk a little bit um, kind of close to what I've, I've already written. I want to tell you a little story of how I got kind of hooked into photography. I can remember I was about 13 years old and I bought a little, one of those little brownie Instamatic cameras with you put the cartridge in and you zip, 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 zip and take pictures. And my parents were taking um, myself and my brothers on a vacation to visit another family up in upstate New York and we were going through the Adirondack Mountains. And I remember I saw a scene of a beautiful mountain in a kind of this very placid lake in front of me. And I asked my father, I said, can, can you stop the car? Can you stop the car? I want to get a picture of this, of this scene. And in my mind, this was the most beautiful scene I had ever seen in my entire life. So I took the picture, got out, snapped the picture, got back in the car. We got back home after the vacation, put my little cassette in the folder and sent it off to Kodak to get my pictures back. My pictures come back. I'm, anxious to see this photograph because I know it's, it's going to be a killer. <laughs> and I'm looking through those photographs and I look through the stack once, I look through twice and I'm like, well, surely it's got to be in here. They must, maybe they left it out. And what I realized, it was in there. I'd already looked at it twice. It was terrible. <laughs> it was horrible. In my mind's eye, I could see something that the camera couldn't see. And I didn't have the skill or the understanding to know how to translate that thing into a reality. Um, and I never forgot that. And then fast forward about 15 or 20 years later, I had an experience. In, I was between gra um, undergraduate and graduate training. And um, I went into a book, bookstore. And I, I, I still continued to take pictures, but not very seriously. And I went into this bookstore. And there was a large book on the shelf and it had a very dramatic picture on the front of it, black and white. And I pulled it down and it was by this guy by the name of Ansel Adams. Well, I'm not an Ansel fan, but, but at that point I was an Ansel fan because I opened that book up and it was a large coffee table book and here were some dramatic photographs and I'd never seen black skies until I saw Ansel's work. And I realized, aha, this individual knows how to transpose what they see and what they feel into something that you can hold in your hand and look at. And I thought to myself, if he can do it, I can do it. So for the next five years, I intensively learned the craft of making images and developing film and matching it with paper. And for 25 years, I worked with large view, view, view cameras, very large view cameras, uh, printing very large negatives. And then the digital revolution came in and I was smart enough to get out of the dark room and get into the light room. So, uh, um, so that's kind of a quick synopsis of what drives me. What has always driven my images is I want to see something that I feel 
and I know has more life in it than maybe necessarily I would see in reality. That there's a hyper-reality. If you're patient, if you're quiet, if you're attentive, you can see it, you can feel it. And if you're skilled, you know how to capture it and then bring, bring, it, bring it forth. This work, um, I do a lot of kind of work. I work commercially. Uh, this is kind of my private work in a sense. Uh, I've done a lot of work in steel mills and large foundries all over the world. It's, there's a whole industrial segment of my work. I've done a lot of work in old abandoned places, specifically in, um, again, foundries and steel mills that have been abandoned or being torn down. Um, this work is work that started about 20 years, 20, about 20 years ago. I started photographing, actually this quarry right here, I was in in 1995 and I was photographing it in black and white. Uh, some of the silo work was started 20 years ago. Um, and uh, I don't know, this last couple of years, I kind of, something happened and I just felt like I need to pick this back up because I've been do busy doing other things. So uh, I made some critical connections in the quarry industry in the United States and doors began to open for me really supernaturally began to open for me because they don't allow, allow people in with cameras to look at this type of stuff. It's, it's pretty rare. And then with the silos, the same thing. I, I started traveling, getting out into the Midwest and getting more in tune with the silos as well. The silos to me are more like a tapestry, discovering tapestries that are already, that are already built and already made. I don't see them as grain elevators. I'm not particularly interested in their function. I'm interested in their aesthetics. And I would say out of every 100 silos I see, I only stop at one or two and take a photograph. I'm looking for something that's very unusual. And like I said, it is a, it is a tapestry to me. The quarry work, a little different. Uh, I started that, again, years ago because of the aesthetics of the quarries and the motifs that are available inside of quarries. Only this time around, I wanted to add the value of the labor that went into it. And how do, you, how do you actually extract a 150 ton piece of granite or marble out of a quarry? How do you make the decisions to cut that piece, piece of uh, marble or quarry? And uh, so I wanted to get up and close and personal with the workers, get down. I've been down inside of these quarries at the bottom, watching them work, uh, photographing the men and the women laboring in, in the quarries. And it's been very, very, very rewarding. The quarry work is still not finished. I'm, I'll be heading to Portugal next month to photograph some of the deepest marble quarries in the world there. And then after that, um, there'll be another exhibition of much more of this work. You're, you're only seeing a very small slice of the pie in, in this exhibition. Um, I mean, I've probably exposed over 40 or 50,000 frames in the last year and a half. Um, not all great photographs, believe me. So anyway, so that's my motivation. Uh, I hope to see this core work into a digital book uh, next year that I'm going to formulate. And I want to give it back into the industry and let the, and I did this with the foundry people as well. I created books and then I, the purpose was to give it back into the industry so that men and women could go home and show their children or their spouse what they do for a living because most of these places don't allow cameras inside and uh, and it's been extremely rewarding for me some of the letters that i've received from family members saying thank you thank you thank you for for doing this work because my, my children now know what my mom or my dad does uh, and it's been very very rewarding um, i'll say this uh, you know a sense of craftsmanship which I don't know the world of things to be losing it in a lot of ways, but a sense of craftsmanship and crafting an image, crafting not only composition, but the follow through all the way to the final print. To me, I'm not finished with an image until it's a print. You can put it on a computer screen all you want. That's not a finished image. I have to see a print. I'm, I'm old school. Uh, I've got to see it finished like that. And so there's a, uh, a sense of crafting an image that I really enjoy. I've always enjoyed that. So, and I think that's all I can say or should say. Doctor, are you going to have a, a show of the quarry work, like a, a large show of all the quarry work? Right. Yeah. The, I'll have a show 
Beginning of 2005 is a tentative schedule at the Groman Museum in Milwaukee. 2025, yeah, 2025. And then I'm hoping, we're hoping to get some funding and move the show up to Barry, Vermont. Barry is a ground zero for granite, uh, granite in the United States. And um, I want the people and the, the community inside of Barry, because there are a lot of old quarry men and families that have worked two and three and four generations in the quarries. I want them to see the quarry work as well. So that's kind of the plan for that. So next year will still be a very busy year for me. I'm not so much in the quarries, but trying to get all, all this other stuff done.